this is Stampy and welcome to another Minecraft video. Actually, it's not Stampy at all. My name's Chris and I'm using Minecraft as an analogy for programming. Uh, most of my videos are all about programming, uh, specifically in C Sharp. Um, this is Minecraft on the iPhone, as you guys may or may not recognize from the huge big controller that's on the right hand side, left hand side, sorry. I'm going to talk to you about programming uh, in terms of Minecraft. Now, here we have a Minecraft world uh, that's very similar to the sort of thing that you might get if you've just started programming for the first time uh, and you're given a program that someone else has started creating for you. Um, as you can see, um, there's already some structures and things that have been built. Um, it's actually night time at the moment, so I'm going to have to be careful. Um, and the whole point of a, a program that you're given that someone else has made is that you should go around and explore it to actually understand more about why things are where they are and what's been going on. Like, why is there a dog down in a hole there? And uh, why is there a little bit of a pit there with some steps? And oh, it looks like there's a pig near a door over there and, and there seems to be a bit of a drop. Here. Oh my gosh, a very, very big drop. So um, yeah, it's uh, obviously something I've got to look into in a bit more detail. And the idea is that you can go through uh, different environments and different um, programs and actually understand more about why they are the way that they are in the same way as you have to actually explore different worlds in Minecraft. So being given most projects is very similar to that, but sometimes you're given a completely blank surface to start, a blank program to start building as you want. This takes me on to my next area of uh, how Minecraft is actually very similar to programming in as much as what you see on the screen, um, the program, requires a lot of logic and requires some creativity as well. So here's uh, an example of uh, good creativity-ish, <laughs> uh, but poor logic. So um, here I am building a house, I'm going to build it out of sand and you may notice that if I want to just remove one of the bricks of sand, the other one slides down. Well that's not exactly the most logical and greatest idea for if you want to build a house. It'd be much more logical to build a house out of stone so that literally you, the stone doesn't actually fall as you build it, which makes much more sense. So in the same way as Minecraft has an element of creativity and logic, so does programming. Now something else that's really quite interesting uh, in terms of from a programming side of things, um, each one of these different items can be considered a class in programming. Um, a class is basically a structure which contains some program code and uh, some uh, data that allows it to actually do a specific task. Now, when I then drop one of these into my environment, into my world, that's the equivalent of creating an object. So the object has been created from a single copy of a class. So I can have multiple copies of the objects that are actually all based on the same class, which makes kind of sense. Um, another thing that might be uh, interesting to see is uh, from a sort of more uh, internal perspective. Um, let's find... Um, something like, for example, um, a furnace. Because a furnace has, um, if I, I can't use a furnace, obviously, because I'm in creative mode. Um, a furnace allows me to put extra objects inside it in order to actually do something with it. And again, that's very similar to being like a class where it has data as well as computer code. Computer code does something, and data is where you store something. In the same way, this could be considered um, variables. Each one of these different items is storing, these boxes are storing different information, especially the boxes along the bottom. I can change what it is that's actually being stored in the bottom here. That is like a variable, a box which stores data. And the data is whatever item I actually put into it at any one time. So I have an equivalent of a variable. I have equivalent of classes. I have equivalent of objects in my world. Um, what else can I make that is very, very similar to um, real programming? Now, there are only three things that programs can actually do. They can follow things through in a sequence, they can select things, or they can do things over and over again, something called iteration. So let's start by showing these. Right, if I want to do a sequence, I want to build a wall and put some uh, torches on the wall. I actually have to build my wall first before I put the torches on. 
that is a sequence, an order that I have to do things. I can't put a torch down and then put a wall on top of it. It doesn't work. I can only put them around it. It won't let me. It saves the torch directly on the ground. So therefore I have to do things in a specific sequence in order for things to work the way that I want it to. This is the first thing you can do in programming. The next thing is something called selection, where there's a choice of two different ways that you can go. Now, a good example of this is to see what lava does to a choice of different blocks. So here we have a wooden block on the left and a stone block on the right. If I stick some lava in the middle, you see that the wooden block burns, but the rock doesn't. This is a choice by the program. If the block is wooden, burn it. If it is not, don't burn it. And I'm then going to extinguish it with some water. And again, that is in itself a choice. If I use water, extinguish the flames. If I don't use water, keep the flames going. If I'm using an empty bucket, I can get rid of the water. If I don't use an empty bucket, I can't. These are all if statements or selections. Iteration or looping can be shown when you mix water and lava together. If I drop down onto here, you can see that when a hot rock lava touches water, as long as the water is not going to burn out the lava totally, it creates stone. And if I get rid of the stone, it creates more stone as the two touch. This is a loop. As I remove the block, the next block gets made. So it goes round and round in a circle, constantly making blocks. And they are the only three things that any computer program can actually do. So in summary then, how Minecraft is like programming? Well, you need to have both creativity and logic in order to produce programs. Programs can do one of three things, sequence, selection or iteration. You can create a blueprint or a class and from that create a series of objects. A class can store both data and also program code so it can store items as well as how to do things. And boxes, known as variables, can actually store different things depending on what you want to store in them. So even in the course of making a program, a variable can actually change, hence the name variable. Hopefully this has been a good little start point to why programs are a bit like Minecraft. And I might be able to find some new examples in the future of why Minecraft actually explains programming better than a lot of other tools.